My guests at this time are the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the authors of the new book, Killing the Business, From Backyards to the Big Leagues. It's Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks. Nick, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Thanks yeah, for uh, having us, man. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, I was telling Matt, Nick, before we joined here, I got the book right here. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, I am 35, so I've uh, a lot of this stuff was like I was telling Matt, you know, it's kind of a walk down memory lane for me with a lot of uh, a lot of new insight. But like for you guys, talk to me. Why did you think now was the right time? I would imagine to write your first autobiography. I would think Jericho style, there will probably be more down the pipeline. Right. Oh, man. Uh, Matt and I joke about it. We we think the timing was actually terrible because of how busy our our schedules have been. And it was pretty much when we were creating AEW. So it was almost impossible, but we found time like in weird ways. Uh, Matt likes to say he when he was dropping his kids off at school he, or waiting for them to be picked up, he'd be writing a chapter or we'd yeah. be on the airplane. Uh, writing and we the funny thing is we did it all on our phone so that that probably made it even harder uh but you know what uh like matt says always it was a labor of love but uh we had to do it and we weren't going to turn something down like this when harbor collins calls us and asks us if we want to write a memoir and just getting that offer we were flattered and we were like hey we, we can't turn this thing down yeah, and I think I was going to add to that and just say that I think that our story is very unique as far as wrestlers books go. Um, I don't think really there's been a wrestler from our era who's who's gotten to tell their story. Um, you know, we've we've all heard kind of the, the stories from the Attitude Era crop of guys, but we haven't heard from us. We haven't heard from the ND Boom guys. And our story is very unique in that way. And, and you know, the other way that it's unique is the fact that we never went to the WWE and settled there. And that's usually where every story ends up. So we, we took a different path. So this is, this is a whole different story about what would have happened if, if some of these guys maybe chose a different, you know, path. And we even have a chapter of the book called the road never taken. Yeah. And it's true because, you know, there literally hasn't been a road that ever taken like this. And we're, we're the first one, we're the Guinea pigs. And I think that's why we knew we had to write a book about it because we knew that what we were experimenting with, with this fork in the road, it was, it was the question was go to WWE or start this new this new thing. And I remember thinking, like God, like this is something really worth writing about. And I'm and I'm glad that we did it. Like Nick said, it was a labor of love. It was really hard. We had we had to hustle through it. But now that it's finished, I get to hold it in my hands. I'm like thank God we did it. I'm so proud of it. Well, and that's one of the things I wanted to ask you all about. You call it the indie boom period, right? Like that 04, 05, 06 period where you guys were coming in there. And like the mm -hmm. business, you know, WCW has gone. WWE is not as hot as it was even just like three years earlier before that. Do you think coming in at that time and starting your careers during that kind of uh, transition period helped your trajectory in the business and helped you guys have the ability to succeed and, and do what you're doing now? Yeah, maybe so. Uh you know, what's funny, though, is it didn't really feel like an a, uh, indie boom period at that time. Yeah. Uh, specifically in California, because like uh, a lot of people from California will say the same thing. Uh, they'll say, get out of California if you want to make it in wrestling. Yeah. And we, we always heard that as young wrestlers. And it actually like it scared us because we were like, man, really? Do we have to move somewhere? Uh, and we never wanted to, and we still have it because we're California boys, you know? And so it was like, man, how do we get out of California to, to make it? And luckily we, we got a, a break and we, we went to Japan for the very first time in 2009. So it, yeah. it actually took us quite a few years to get a small break, to get out of California, but getting out of California actually helped our career more. And I would say, man, the, the indie boom period actually came a little bit later after that. And yeah, I agree. Yeah. hundred percent. That, that's the thing is like, you guys came in at such an interesting time there in 2005 where like, yeah, WWE wasn't where it was. The indies were just about to pop. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like there was something there where you guys were able to create something because nobody was really looking, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Like, I, I remember it being kind of a, a cold period. Um, there right. was no money. There was no money in wrestling. I, I, yeah, hundred percent. Zero money. Cause I, I mean, we talk about it in the book about, I remember how blown away we were when, when generico told us he was making, I don't remember what the number was. It was like $25,000 a year. And we were like, what? 
yeah. like we're making twenty five dollars a match, <laughs> you know, because like, that yeah. shows you how bad it was. Uh, yeah. There was no money, and I remember at times thinking like is this impractical for me to be thinking about doing a career with this? Cause the, there's no money here. And if I ever want to make money, I have to go to the WWE. And, and that, as we knew, we come to find out in the book also, when we were extras, we, we realized quickly, man, I don't really, really know if I'm going to work there. You know, it's like, we almost felt like we were almost running out of options if we were going to do this for a living. And at one point, our goal was just to be able to do this for a living and, and, and be able to support ourselves and our families eventually down the line, you know, when we had families, but that was the goal. It's like, if I could do this as a job, that would be great. Like I never thought of superstardom. I never thought of being on TV and being famous and selling, you know, thousands of t-shirts and all that stuff that, that sort of just came later. And I, like, if you would have told me 10 years ago when we were struggling on impact that we would be where we are today, I would go, no way. You know, like so even, even 10 years ago, like I, it didn't look, it didn't look real, you know? Yeah. And there's so right. many little stories I want to ask you about from this book. And I only have so much time, you know, you talk about your rise and you talk about how you guys didn't land in WWE, but knowing you guys knowing your style, there was one particular story I wanted to ask you about. And that was the first time you guys met Shawn Michaels. Mm. Um, like I can read how you feel in the text here, but I don't know if you mind talking to everybody about like what that was, that experience was like for you guys to finally get to meet Sean and have him impart some wisdom to you. Right. Matt, do you want to start it? Or yeah, it, okay. it, it, it's funny. Like, Mar we, 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 we befriended Marty Jannetty because we booked him on our independent. And, you know, he told wild war stories and some seemed really out of the realm of possibility. We were like, this is, there's no way that happens. Like, we would question it even back then. Like, we, we knew, like, some wrestlers were kind of carny and they would say things and, and we would kind of humor them, you know. And he, I remember him calling us and saying, hey, I heard you guys are going to WWE uh, to do extra work. And we're like, yeah. He's like, all right, well, I'm going to tell Sean that uh, you guys are coming and, and hopefully he can talk to you guys. And we were like kind of rolling our eyes, you know, <laughs> like we didn't really believe it. Uh, so sure enough, we, you know, we're, we're sitting there in catering and we, we, we see all these big stars and we're kind of all starstruck. And then finally we see the guy and it's Shawn Michaels, our hero, you know, and he's sitting at uh, the, one of the tables alone with Jesse Hernandez, who's an old school referee, uh, back when it was called the WWWF. And, um, he, he's an old, he's, a, he's also a promoter here in Southern, well, not here, but in Southern California back home. And we were very familiar with Jesse. So Jesse sees us and he waves us over and we're just like, we don't believe it. We're like, why would Jesse wave us over there? And he does it again. Finally, we, 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 we head over there and Sean is just sitting there looking up at us. And we're just like, what is this? You know, it was so surreal. And uh, he knew, he knew our names and sure enough, Marty came through and told and called Sean that morning and said, Hey, these kids look out for them. And he described what we look like. And, uh, and we sat there and we got to really just talk about tag team wrestling. And he gave us good advice and, and what we should do. And, and, uh, how, what speed we should work at and how we're going to get people's attention. And uh, he was kind enough to take us over and kind of get us like a bonus. He took us over to the payroll. I remember and Sergeant Slaughter was working payroll at the time. And he just really treated us really well. Cause I knew, I think he knew we were huge fans, like clearly. Okay. Uh, I think maybe he was trying to impress us, uh, but it, it was the coolest. And and I, I thought he was the best. And I, and people, you know, you hear, bad stories about Sean all the time. And that's the only time I've ever dealt with Sean. And I still think back fondly and I go, no, Sean was like the one time we met him, we were kids and he didn't have to be nice to us and he treated us great. So like, I have nothing but positive, positive feelings towards, uh, towards HBK. <laughs> Nick, any thoughts? Yeah. But like Matt said, uh, we're, we're young, naive little kids, you know, so for our hero at the time to, to like, take care of us like that it, it actually it blew our minds and i like at that day we were like oh my god i guess we're getting signed to the wwe <laughs> yeah, right and, the book, yeah. uh, and uh, the next day sean wasn't at smackdown and we completely got kayfabed by uh whoever was in charge oh, you know what it was is it was it was johnny ace so he took us over That's to johnny right. ace yeah. and johnny ace uh like he's just like he's the head of talent relations. Like you got to take a good look at these kids. Marty says they're good. They're right. good. Take a hard look at them. And Johnny's just like, yeah, 
I will, Sean. And then the next day, he just totally caved. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he didn't even act like he remembered us from the day prior. And yeah, it was like we did. never really forgot. It was like forgot. we never met him. Yeah, it was like it yeah, never happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how surreal is it for you guys now being the like growing up with your idols, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels, others, you know, like in WWE. Now here you are on Wednesday nights, you've got your own promotion and like Sean is one of the guys leading the charge and the other company that is, you know, competing right against you. What is that? How surreal is that for you guys to be in a position like that, to kind of be, you know, tacitly, you know, battling people you grew up loving and idolizing like that. <laughs> you know, it's weird. Like when, when you're in the thick of things and you're in the middle of it all, you don't even think about it. Uh, so it's probably something we'll, we'll think about later on in life. But like, as of now, I, I, I didn't even think of that question, you know what I mean? Because we're so involved with every detail, like every little thing that's going on on Dynamite that it's hard to even think about the other show, like at all. So, I like, forget that they have shows. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Thanks, yeah. I, I often forget. Yeah. I'm so tunnel visioned in our own product. But like, that I'm you like, know, oh yeah, that's right. There's another show tonight. That's right. And, that, <laughs> and that's the mentality of dynamite and AEW is we never wanted to know what that show was doing because we we feel like if we do know then it it might screw up our brains and our minds on how we book things as well so we never have wanted to get caught up in any of that yeah for sure right. well uh just to, to kind of wrap it up here just on that note of what you're doing right now in AEW, obviously you guys toured up with top flight last night on dynamite uh this match sounded like it was pushed off a week, Matt, due to like your injury. Do you want to update folks on how you're feeling? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we're just being taking precautionary measures. You know, I feel good. Um, uh, all things considered, like man, I this is probably the best I've felt since I got injured. Whenever it was, um, like what was it? I, I believe I got the MRI uh, late August, right? And God, like last night, man, I I felt great. So. Yeah, I you know I I think we just came off a really tough match. It was, you know, we went thirty minutes. <laughs> it was it was brutal. Yeah. So I think that I think that was just the medical team kind of stepping in, and going, "Hey guys, like that match was three days ago. You know, let's uh, let's let's ease into this." <laughs> and uh, and I'm and sometimes that's good because we have, they have to protect us from ourselves. Because if it was yeah. my choice, I'd right. be wrestling. 30 minutes every single day having matches like that every day. And, you know, and we're, we're a big investment to this company and we have to be able to go out there and perform matches like we did last night. Like people are counting on us. So I'm, I'm appreciative of it. I'm glad people step in and, and, but I, but yeah, I, and I feel, I feel wonderful, especially being in there last night with a 19, that 21 year old. And, and, you know, I'm 35 now and I'm still being able to do that style and I and, and feel good doing it. Like, like all things considered even this morning i'm like i'm not even really that sore so no i uh i'm ready i'm, I'm ready to keep going man uh what an ending there yeah it's their story top uh flight could be a lot like your story it sounds like especially with guys like you kind of helping them along so you know what you're right and then that like nick nick made this mention yesterday it was like it felt like 10 years ago back when we were at TNA and we were making our big TV debut against the Motor City Machine Guns, but we, we swapped positions. And now we were in the Motor City Machine Guns role, and then these guys are the new Young Bucks. So it felt good to kind of like relive that, and, and they killed it. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, I know we got to wrap it up here, guys. I want to thank you so much for the time. Again, the book is Killing the Business from Backyards to the Big Leagues. Do you guys want to – Take us out. Tell everybody where they can go find this thing and, and get it right now. Yeah, you can go to youngbucksbook.com or you can just you could go to your local Barnes and Noble store and buy it off the shelf. Or bn.com's actually got some uh, signed versions that are still available. I think there's only a few left though. Right, uh, right now we're doing good, man. As of yesterday, overall on bn.com, we were number seven, and autobiography is number four behind Barack Obama, Dolly Parton, and Matthew McConaughey. So it's yes. like it blows my mind blows my mind it's insane it's it really is a roller coaster so we're just happy that people are buying it and enjoying it and we appreciate it all